So Chuck and James' album is about to drop. It's the Via Bus Weekly Coffee Shop. <laughs> Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Via Bus Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. You guys, we are so excited because when it comes to talent representation, our guest is the ultimate collaborator. He is so gracious to be here to share all of his knowledge. We have our questions, we have your questions that you want answers to. So we are getting buzzed with a totally awesome James Murray, the pride of Abrams Artists. Woohoo! The pride, huh? He's over there sitting down like, yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's me. Yes. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that one back to the <laughs> office yeah. and I'll let everybody know. <laughs> By the way, Take everybody, it, I am the pride it. of you. You heard it yet, or it'll make yes. its way down. That is so mm -hmm. great, man. Make everyone walk a couple steps behind Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> So, uh, so how does it be, feel to be one of the first uh, people on our very new, brand new set yes. here? It's, it's a beautiful nine. space. Yes. I, wish yeah. I like, I like that. That looks, you know, the arm. I like right. The arm. I like the aesthetic. I wish my apartment. Like, <laughs> you were in nice. apartment. Well, we like... are available for design consultation. Yeah. You'll just Absolutely, let us know. Man. We could sit oh, on the cool. couch in the back on the way out. Oh my totally. goodness. Well, listen, man. Thanks for taking the time. We know how busy you guys are uh, over there at Abrams, and and, yes. and you know specifically you because you're like. Like freaking running the whole organization over there and it's like you guys are like there's not a minute of the day that you're not doing like a trillion things mm -hmm. so for you like i remember when i called you and i go hey man would you like to be on the show and you're like yeah, yeah totally <laughs> i'm like i i can't even believe he takes my call much he got less. a hall pass he's like i'm out of here yeah no no yeah. no but we, there was three follow-up emails like hey did you get this i'm like yeah I got yes it. I, got I, got it. It. I got it i got it but we understand that that's, that's the way me. it goes I'm a so Virgo. thank you that's me i'm so. like do we know do we know so am i the, you are i am a Virgo. When's your birthday? August 25th. Wow. September 10th. There you go. Mm -hmm. Get down, man. Well, this is going to be a very organized conversation. A very organized We're conversation. We're going to cover every detail. Excellent. <laughs> My goodness gracious. Um, so you know what? Listen, I, I, I want to I kick it off by asking you some questions that our viewers have in regards to a talent agent. Mm -hmm. And... You know, we live in a crazy world of voiceover right now, right? And you got, you know, all these people out there all over the world. So I want to know, and they want to know, in order to be represented by somebody like Abrams, do you have to be L.A. talent or can you live other places? Or New York. Yeah. No, uh, they don't have to be in Los Angeles. Sort of the way that we operate is very hands-on and face-to-face. -face. So certainly being in L.A. or being in New York with our New York office, uh, it really, really helps to yeah. develop that client-agent relationship organically, mm -hmm. which is something that I take a lot of pride in building, and I yep. think it's really important when you're representing somebody. So it certainly helps, but if somebody is is equally as talented and has the right drive and the right work ethic and is sort of what we're looking for but happens to live elsewhere, you know, it's definitely a consideration. You know, it just takes a little bit of extra effort, but... Uh, there's been plenty of times where I found that it's worth it and it's paid off. That's mm -hmm. cool, man. Yeah. And so what is it that agents, in your opinion, are looking for today uh, from, in regards to talent? I think it's a couple of different things. You know, obviously talent, first and foremost. <laughs> They've got to be talented. You know, that always Talent helps. Wow. agent. James, yeah, you're they, so traditional. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> um, I, I always try to impress upon people that it is show business, right? And there is a business behind yeah. it. And if somebody uh, is looking for representation and has already gone through a certain number of steps in terms of building their business or building their brand, so to speak, uh, that really goes a long way with me. I've, you know, there are plenty of people that I've met who sort of expect us to do a majority of the heavy lifting. Yeah. Uh, and while we'll do our fair share, um, I always have to remind people at the end of the day, you know, it's your business. Yeah. So you need to be doing everything that you can and then more to build that. It's such a hyper competitive industry yeah. mm -hmm. in all levels, you know, from the talent to the agents to managers, everybody. There's so many people that want to be doing it. Yeah. Uh, there's really sort of no, no rest for the wicked. You yeah. know, people need to be constantly working on their craft, building their business, doing their own outreach. Uh, you know, if they if they happen to be in Los Angeles where there's a very, as you guys know, very tight-knit voiceover community, mm -hmm. community, they need to be out involved in that and kind of just hitting the pavement, 
Yeah. You know, just, just working it from every angle. Um, what, you know, a lot of times people, they may have the talent, they may have the business model in place, but they get passed on. What is the rationale sometimes why do why you guys pass on talent? It could be a variety of things. You know, it's if I have a lot of people that are really competitive in that area, then I might not feel that I could do a good enough job for a person that they might deserve. Um, a lot of times it's sort of a gut feeling whether, cause I, I want, I want to set somebody up for success and I mm-hmm. want to be set up for success. Right. So I don't want to take somebody on if I don't think that I can generate opportunities and activity for them or, uh, kind of help push their career forward. Uh, and I also just have to be passionate about representing them. You yeah. know, it's such a, such a subjective business that. I have to, I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of talented people that I might not have recognized it or I might not see it or they might not have been right for me. So we decided yeah. to pass, but I've, I'm always like to be proven wrong. You yeah. know, if mm-hmm. I pass on somebody and all of a sudden six months or a year, I hear that they booked something, you know, that would have been great to bend on the end of that to help them. But if they're working, then that's fantastic. Yeah. And I, I often tell people like, if you're not, you might not be right for me or might not be right for us, but that doesn't mean you're not right for somebody else. Right. Uh, and just, you know, it's all about timing. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you, what do you recommend that someone does if they are not right for you right now? I mean, but they have their heart set on you guys. Do they wait two months? Do they wait? I mean, what do you, what do they do with that? I like to be kept uh, up to date, you know, there's people that I haven't, I've decided not to represent, but also have been like, Hey, I'm happy to be a resource to you. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, we are sort of very accessible and very available. You know, it's, I think it's about sort of staying in touch. It's sales at the end of the day, you're selling yourself, you're selling your service, you're selling your talent. Uh, I'm always happy to have people reach back out, you know, don't be annoying about it. Right. You know, but you know, if it's like, if you're doing something cool or you're doing something new and, uh, use that as sort of an organic opportunity to reach out and be like, hey, I've done this new play or I've I booked this job on my own or I've got this happening or that happening. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always, yeah. I might not always respond, but I do. I'm always getting that. I'm always filtering that information because mm-hmm. you never know. I mean, I have had times, like I said, where something just has clicked, whether it, you know, it didn't feel right in the moment, but six months later, something has changed, whether on my end or their end or all yeah. of a sudden, you know, I'm like, oh, I get it now. This yeah. is actually, I missed this opportunity. I'm grateful that it's come back around and, and uh, you know, kind of just keep plugging away. So I'm always telling people that you guys are busy and that listening to demos is probably nowhere in your priority list. That's not how you make money, right? Mm-hmm. You don't make money by listening to, to new people's demos and signing new people. Um, but when somebody submits to your agency, to Abrams, and they're doing it by the book, right? Maybe they're even being uh, re- uh, uh, referred by an industry professional of some sort, and uh, and you got your. Does that email will it always get a response? Should they follow up? Is there times where like, gosh, I want to respond, but I just don't have the time? How does that work? So, um, yeah, he's I will, like, good question. Yeah, Chuck. well, it is a good question because <laughs> I know somebody personally who is trying to work those angles from the other side. And one of her biggest gripes is that she doesn't get a response. And it mm-hmm. never occurred to me that somebody on the other end is like eagerly waiting, even if it, whether it's a no or a yes yeah. or not right now. Right. So uh, when I have the time. The sound of the crickets is definitely. Exactly. Dense. And you know, it's a, well, it's a respect <laughs> thing too, right? I yeah. understand that it's, it's tough to put yourself out on a limb. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, to, I totally get that. and. Quite frankly, I don't know that I would be able to do it. Mm-hmm. But I do, when I can, I do try to respond. Just be like, hey, I got it. Thanks. You know, we'll listen. Or something like that. Just just as a, like, you know, a personal respect thing. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, I, I don't I don't often have the time to do that. Every, every sort of cold submission I get, I put in a file. And then on a Friday, if I have a half hour, 45 minutes to kind of crank them out, yeah. I'll do that. Or, uh, you know, 
if something happens to catch my eye in an email and I happen to have a free moment, like yeah. when I get that email. Yeah. yeah. Is there a oh. better time of day to mm. reach out to you? No. Uh, versus, or a better a better day of the week or maybe no. don't even no. try me at this day no it doesn't no, it doesn't matter for you it doesn't matter it's a constant on onslaught yeah right yeah. all angles all yeah the time. no day yeah. is the same which is kind of a blessing and a curse right so so how many seconds do you need when you when you hit play on a demo to know i'm going to keep listening or there's something it, here 15 20 seconds oh that's a lot yeah. that's a double digit most yeah. people are like two four yeah. six <laughs> two minutes uh, Two seconds. When what are you That's listening That's generous. For? Yeah. Well, it depends if it's a commercial. I've got to believe the person. I always think like I don't necessarily need to believe you, but I need to believe that you believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so something authenticity. If it's a vocal quality that sort of just catches my ear. How's the read? How's the demo? All that stuff. It's just, you know, I've been I've been in voiceover for eleven years, and over that time, I have developed. Just a little bit of an ear for listening, just realizing what I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And fortunately, that has, as I've grown and as the industry has changed, those sounds have kind of come together. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just, again, it goes back to, is this somebody that doesn't necessarily sound like somebody we already have? Is this mm -hmm. somebody that I could hear on air? Uh, is this person bringing something to the table that I think is useful? Yeah. 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 Is... Do, do you feel, and, and I'm only asking you because of the world that we live in and everybody's always like, oh, we're conversational, real, and mm -hmm. relatable, and you can't sound like an announcer, just like I'm doing right now, uh, <laughs> and all these things. So do you feel, I mean, is it probable that maybe too much training could be bad in today's world? Totally. I do believe that to be the case. Um, I tried... There's sort of two different areas of people that we work with. Right? Yeah. There are more traditional voice actors who's like, this is what they want to do. This is all they've ever wanted to do. They're not going to do anything other than this. And that's awesome. And there's definitely a lot of work for those people. But at the same time, being at an agency where we have so many different departments and access to so many different types of actors from various backgrounds, I do also look to people that are not only voice actors that are maybe mm -hmm. more multi-hyphenate. So whether they're musicians or whether they're more traditional on camera actors or stage actors or on Broadway or right, whatever it is, right. try to really cover the gambit so that if I'm providing auditions to somebody in the animation space or commercials or video games, they get a nice mix of different types of talent. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you never really know. You know, I right. can I can put forth what I think is right and what mm -hmm. I think is going to work, but that's going to go to somebody and then they're going to have their opinions about it and so on and so forth. And by the time it gets to somebody that's making a decision, uh, that person's taste could be wildly different from mine. So yeah. I do, you know, yeah. I try to I try to guide people, but also cover the gambit so that we're we're giving options. Yeah, that's really cool, man. So just to go back to demos really quickly. So what kinds of things do you like and what things are you so sick of hearing on demos i like the visual demo mm -hmm. you know that's something that i think is really impactful this is a newer thing that's going yeah. on out there yeah. And, yeah 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 it's you know if you just think about it like we're in today's society we're all so busy right so it's yeah. much easier for me to sit there and listen to a demo and then get distracted by an email or somebody walking into my office or whatever it is than it is if I'm watching something, right? Because mm -hmm. then you've captured two of the five senses and, you know, particularly like an animation, for example. Yeah. Somebody could have great range and voice characters that I might not off the bat recognize the voice, but if it's paired up with a visual element, it's like, oh, I know that character. I've seen that character. I know this show. And then, you know, half the time those jokes don't land as well as they would with a visual component. So mm -hmm. if you're if you have all of that together, I think it just makes it more impactful. I know it makes it more impactful for the casting community out there. It definitely mm -hmm. makes it a little uh, easier for me to see the work, you know. But not everybody, I understand not everybody has access to that type of material to put on a demo. Yeah. Right. Well, right. I mean, it's a service that you have to right. have somebody, you know, either create for you if you don't have it. Um, or if you do have the footage, you just have to have somebody go through it and help you put something together. Yeah. Um, in regards to um, to you know auditions uh, at Abrams, when you guys, I mean, obviously, you know, the morning comes, you have a bunch of auditions, they got to get paired out or whatever, you know, go out to the talent, mm -hmm. then they're sending you back, you know, three thousand MP3s. 
Is somebody going through those MP3s to quality control, make sure they pronounced everything right? <laughs> a, and B, are there some people that are just like, man, they're so off the mark that we're just not even, we can't send that in? Yeah, it happens from time to time. We do, we're really good about the services that we provide. So in addition to people sending their auditions directly to us recording from home, we have two professional booths and a full-time audio engineer. Yeah. Essentially, almost like an in-house casting mm -hmm. office, which I really like because for better or worse, I get to see my clients all day, every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're also, we're always fielding those auditions that get emailed to us. And then we go through them, we listen to them and determine what are the reads that we like, what's working, what's not working, can we give feedback, how's the audio quality, is mm -hmm. that acceptable, is it unacceptable, sort of what can we do. Uh, and certainly in the last you know six months to a year, we've really kind of buckled down on, on the quality of auditions that we're putting out, you know. It gets so busy for those in the casting community. I mean, their first pass through, they're just looking for reasons to eliminate people. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we want to do everything that we can control, be great at the things that we can control mm -hmm. so that our talent and our clients, yeah. you know, have a higher probability of passing through. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I tell people that all the time. There's so yeah. many things that you're not in control of. Mm -hmm. Your audio quality is one of the things that you are in control of. So it should be what it should be. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's just, there's an industry standard for yeah, a reason. Absolutely. And, and it, go, it goes back to the business part of it. Yeah. It was like the acting is, that's the craft. And then the audio quality is the business part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think are your strengths as an agent? Am I on camera now? No, oh, you're yeah. on camera. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one's tough for me because I'm fairly modest, but the relationships with the clients. Mm -hmm. You know, I like this business first and foremost because early on, I started in New York and early on I realized what we were doing was a noble thing because being an actor, you know, most actors, they don't know where their next job is gonna come from. I could not do that, it's very tumultuous. But I get a lot of pride and satisfaction out of helping people do what they love. And through that sort of ethos that I work through, um, you know, we develop really, really strong relationships with my clients. Yeah. You know, 10% of a job is great, but I, there's so much more meaning when you're actively invested in somebody's career and they book a job on a show that they, it's, you know, a reboot of a show that yeah. they right. grew up loving and it might only be an incidental character, but you call them and they just like are breaking down on the phone because it means mm -hmm. so much to them. Yeah. And that's, I, I, I take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. That's, that's really, really cool. you know, yeah. being accessible uh, and being open and being honest, but fighting for your clients because you're actively invested in what they have to offer and what they're doing is, you know, I, I, I often tell people I can see myself doing this for the rest of my life. And it's because of that. That I that I can say that yeah. earnestly and honestly. That's I love great, that. Man. So you never uh, go into the booth when everyone's gone and try try your hand. At because you know, James, you do have kind of a <laughs> pretty nice voice here. Have you I'm ever a thought about it? Terrible actor. <laughs> I am a terrible actor. I tried once and I listened to it back and I was like, delete this. I never want to hear it again. We actually Put have that MP3. Can we play that? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, well, you're on mic right now, so let's hear a little promo read. No, James. not happening. <laughs> not no, happening. Not happening. That's one so, question I'm so not answering. So how did you? So how did you? Did you always know you wanted to be an agent? How did that happen? No, I. Uh, you know, you didn't want to be an actor. So then, how did you? I, I, was, I graduated from college and I was working this ad sales job in New York City, and it was super shady. I was like, man, I do not. This is not for me. Uh, what were you selling? I was selling advertising space for a magazine that I don't think really existed. It was very, <laughs> a very- fake magazine. It was very, yeah, pretty much. Oh it my was God, very shady, it. Okay. but learned great phone skills, very which good. carried me yes. through. Um, and I just, you know, I was like, I don't like this. There's something off about it. I don't really know what I want to do. And I had uh, a family member who owned an audio production, owns an audio production studio in New York, passed my resume along to Abrams Artists and mm -hmm. I, interviewed there and was offered a job. And I was like, great, I have no idea what I want to do with my life, but I want a job. This is fantastic. And just very quickly, I realized that the people that I worked with were great people. Um, and I have always been sort of a people person relationships yeah. are my thing. And, mm -hmm. and that 
I was like, oh, I really, really like it here. And then through just what we were doing and all the clients that we got to interact with and all the cool stuff that we got to do. And honestly, like telling my friends what I what I was doing and them all being like, whoa, well, that's a name. I'm like, all right, I can just, I'll settle into this. Yeah. And just to, over time, my my passion for it has I've just grown to really, really love it. And but not only love the job, but love doing it at the agency that I work for. You know, I yeah. try to take a lot of ownership over that place because yeah. I've been there for a long time. Um, and just you know. I wake up in the morning. I'm happy to go to work. I like what I do. And it's something that, I don't know, not everybody can say that. Yeah. Yeah, and you, for sure. Hey, He's you, the Jerry Maguire of voiceover. Totally, he is. <laughs> um, and you, Show me that 10%, <laughs> baby. Well, that concludes part one with our good buddy, James Murray. And we'll be back next week with part two. So yes, check it out. Yes, we will. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow all of us on social. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz. <laughs>